Um, all right, so let's talk about the actual gun a little bit. Uh, let's talk about what I, an ideal build that I, I find uh, for these bird's head grip guns. LuckyGunner.com is my go-to resource for in-stock, fast shipping ammunition. Whether you're looking for rifle ammo, handgun ammo, rimfire ammo, or shotgun ammo, go to LuckyGunner.com for the best place on the internet to find it all in stock and ready to ship. They have stood by us all in this ammo pandemic, given us great education via their YouTube channel and their ballistic testing as well. Go and check them out and find great ammo ready to ship at good prices. There's, there's two different flavors here, right? For shotguns, we're gonna see uh, semi-autos, like, and we're gonna see pumps. If you're doing it right, they're really in that category. But there's some weird lever action stuff out there. There's a reason why lever actions went away. Um, anyway, any, upset anyone? Okay. Uh, with a pump gun, what I like to see on all of the shockwaves, all of the uh, TAC 14s out there and the new stuff that I, I'm forgetting right now. Um, I like to see a, a set of hand stops on these guns. The one that comes from the factory on all of these guns is garbage. Uh, I have seen four of them rip out under recoil now. And the way that they rip out is usually by someone bringing their hand in front of the muzzle of a gun that just fired. On a pump gun, at least you got that little added bit of safety that you would have to rack that gun again uh, before getting that in if it ripped out on recoil. But if it ripped out while you're resetting the slide and pressing the trigger, hamburger hand. I don't want that. Uh, so I want to see on, uh, on the front of these guns, I like to see a hard hand stop. I don't like to see them at the six o'clock position uh, because, well, because of body mechanics here. I want you to think about uh, bearing weight in exercise. So if you're doing a push, like you're doing a bench press, or even better, if you are doing bar dips, where are you bearing weight in your hand? Right through there, right? Now, if you are uh, pressing an object away from you, you bias towards extending your thumb and bearing more weight in the webbing between your thumb and index finger. So you're shooting a bow, all the bow designs know they have that, that rotated grip. There's a reason why, right? Because pushing the flat deflects stuff and it makes it harder to point true. But bearing that weight in, in there as you extend the thumb forward, that works really well. If you go home and try this on the dip bar, it may not be as comfortable, but you will have much easier time pinching the bars with index and thumb and loading it on that surface than you will with not using fingers and just floating base of palm to do those dips. So I like to see those stops uh, reflect that, right? It lets me load very hard into that, that bearing surface. The grip here is something, but it is not everything. Uh, and especially with a gun this short where you don't have the, uh, the stock to give you that, that whoopsie, that free zone to, to mess up a little bit, I want the hard hand stops there. Well, the reason why we don't want those in the six o'clock position as they come from the factory, if you wanted to do the most painful wrist manipulation ever, <laughs> Put your thumb up in the air and press down on your fingers, right? Anyone who does a little bit of jits knows. Yeah, it's a wrist lock. Do not fire a shotgun while putting yourself in a wrist lock. That sucks. Uh, Pardon me while I go change where my hand stop is on my shotgun. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of it. So I want it at the... Uh, at the nine o'clock position for right-handed shooters, at the three o'clock position for left-handed shooters. If you are one of the guys who likes to do the, the side swapping stuff a lot, uh, maybe consider having an index point or a hand stop on both areas. Uh, this gun is, is set up for everyone to use right now, so I have it on both sides. I'll tell you that I've shot this technique for a number of years now. I'm to the point, I have a good handle on this where I don't need the hand stop 
but I want it there. So I will not have the hand stop on the right side of a lot of my guns set up for this, for defense, uh, because the odds of me like doing that, that side swap transition, I think are pretty low. If we go back to the conversation that we had about room clearing and, and those hard corners, um, people downplay the, the hard corner a lot, right? Uh, I think if you look at rooms and how they're actually populated in real life, there's very often chairs in the hard corners, there's people occupying those corners. Um, so I, I will say, okay, yeah, the hard corners are important. Uh, I will say that the hard corners are more important than the side swap, right? But having a platform that is generally set up to address hard corners is, in my mind, more important than having like that, that beating that skill in to side swap a gun, right? To, to shoulder transition a gun. And the math supports me there. If you're talking about a center fed room, there are two hard corners. There is one of them that may be conducive to a shoulder transition. So 100% more of the time, you're dealing with something that, that needs general focus on hard corners more than the, the side swap, right? Okay. Um, so for the, that's for the front end of the gun. I want that hand stop there. Uh, you, can, you can double up on this. Uh, on the utility of the hand stop by just making the hand stop a light. Verify clear for me on that. Clear. All right. Uh, so swapping guns here. Uh, this is a gun that is set up for me. The way that I would like a, a defense gun to be set up that is a, a um, bird's head grip gun. So on this gun, I just have the hand stop on the left side of the gun here for a right-handed shooter. And that hand stop is a TLR-8. Uh, there's, there's two lights, sorry, three lights that I found that work for this really well. There is the TLR-7, there is the TLR-8, both with this style of switch, and then there's the TLR-RM, which is the longer thousand lumen with the, it's like the old Enforce clicky button on the back. And it's just, just rounded enough on the back that that is a very comfortable hand stop. The hand stops that I have on that uh, 590 are narrow. They are not ideal for high round count shooting. It's gonna bump you, right? But it's gonna stop your hand from going into the bad place too. This is much more comfortable. There's a nice rounded large surface area for me to really load into there. So when I grip this gun, I load in there, grip around the gun, run from there. Cool. Uh, benefits there. With this switch system, as soon as I drive the gun out, all I have to do to activate the light is drive a little bit of my thumb pressure in there. Uh, for home defense guns, I think light indies are not as big of a deal people will make them out for team environments and you're like falling out of helicopters doing doing stuff it's a bigger deal okay i i, I get you um, but uh, i i actually like that i can just drive this gun out and in smashing that grip i'm activating the light at the same time so as, as we move down the gun uh, another feature that really helps here is having an optic and having an optic that is elevated off of the receiver. So I wanna see, uh, when I first started doing this, I was using, I was just using a bead sight and it's doable. You really gotta get your cheek down behind that gun to do it, um, but it is doable. So I'll, I'll swap out to the, uh, <clears throat> the dummy gun here. This angle exists on every one of these shotguns and then it would continue into that bird's head grip to get in behind a rib or a bead i'm having to really drive my my cheek down having that gun really high up on my face really high up on a structure on my face that doesn't have much padding at all that's a bummer that's it's uh it is very painful to do that wrong it is uncomfortable to do that right. You put an optic on there, even the low, the low mount optic, and all of a sudden you go from here to there and you're on 
a much easier surface. You're kind of like right where your teeth are uh, inserting into your, your mouth there. Um, and uh, you get a nice flat on everyone that I have met, their face there, that kind of lines the gun up. Um, that low mount is okay. You do like the absolute co-witness height optic there on top of that receiver and all of a sudden, I'm now putting the grip right on the ball of muscle on my mandible. And that's pretty comfy. There's a lot of, lot more cushion there. This is attached to my face in alignment, detached from my face in talking about like suspension vibration wise, right? A little bit detached from my brain is what I should say. Uh, so uh, that optic a little bit up allows me a little bit more comfort there. Um, and a lot more ability to keep my eyes up over that gun, see what I'm, see not just what I'm shooting, but what ev everything else in the environment is too. Uh, so I like that. Uh, going higher than that, I have seen some shooters who benefit from it just because of the way that their body is built. There's some long neck individuals, there's some longer face individuals, but I think that the absolute co-witness height on these guns is the sweet spot for most people. Going back from that, uh, this is a recoil strap. I am biased towards this product because I invented it and produced this, but uh, this is the rear hand stop. So uh, in a push-pull technique, purely push-pull, you don't need a hand stop at all on your fire control hand because it's pulling towards you. What I'm gonna be teaching you today is a push clench technique uh, that has a lot more to do with torquing of the grip and holding this, uh, holding this arm, this dominant arm to your body. And that does benefit from a hand stop. The other thing, the other reason why I want a hand stop is that without a stock and without an iron grip, especially on some of these shotgun loads that are cheap, they're very high impulse or rapid impulse recoil. As in, uh, that gun that gun accelerates really quickly, so much so that how many of you have reset your grip after firing two, two or three shots out of a shotgun? Even though you were gripping it as hard as you possibly could, it skips your hand, right? Skips your hand on the support hand, and it will skip your hand on the fire control group. And that, that's a big deal for your trigger control your positioning on the trigger, uh, all your manipulations there. Um, it's also very unpleasant on the five, 590s, the Mossberg stuff, when you slice your thumb, web thumb on the safety and when you bash your middle finger into the trigger guard. Uh, so this, this hand stop keeps me from that. Um, it's the second place where we're dividing the recoil, right? The recoil is coming into the body. Uh, first here, second here, and then third, I am actually pinning this gun to the cheek. Uh, so we are dissipating that, not in rearward force into my jaw or face, uh, but as a frictional force gliding along my cheek. Does that make sense? It doesn't hurt so bad when this slides along the face. It hurts pretty bad when you use your face as a, well, as a stop for the gun.